Hi everyone and welcome to the eighth week. It has been already two months as we started to sew together and uh, in today's class we will be practicing to make a quarter scale skirt with the with a yoke and gathering. So basically today we will we will learn what is yoke and how to make gathering on a skirt. Let's see in details the current example of the quarter scale skirt. Today we will be practicing to attach a yoke. Also, if you can see there is a top stitch. Another part is gathering. So I will show you a simple method how to make an equal smooth gathering. Also, we will uh, attach side seams of the skirt. On one of the side seams, we will leave an open space, which is for the zipper, but we will not attach a zipper today. And uh, we will practice to make a double turn hem. And of course, uh, to remind serging, we will serge all side seams. Okay, so back to the yoke. Because yoke can be anywhere, it can be on the blouse, it can be on the skirt, even on the dress, maybe on the jacket, really depends on the style. So what is yoke? It's a pattern piece which is a part of a garment usually fitted around the neck or shoulders or around the hips to provide support to looser part of the garment. What is gathering? Gathering is a sewing technique for shortening the length so longer piece can be attached to a shorter piece. In the current example, the skirt itself is a longer piece, but uh, the yoke is shorter piece. So we did this gathering in order to make this length be equal to this length. Before we start to make a skirt, I want to explain in details how to do gathering. Uh, when you do gathering, you have to do two stitch lines. We usually call it base stitch because uh, if you look closer, you will see that the distance is much bigger than a usual stitch. This is how a normal stitch line looks. You can see that the size between stitches is much smaller than this one. I will show you how to regulate the stitch length on the machine. On my machine, I have on the right side the button that regulates the length of the stitch. Usually, when you sew on your machine, the stitch length has to be 2.5 or in my machines either 2.4 or 2.6 but if you do basting the stitch line that i previously showed you have to make it as long as possible on my machine five is the longest that's why uh try to do the longest that you can on your machine as well back to the sample once you stitch two lines you need to take the tail of the thread. They're a little bit twisted. That's why first you have to untwist it and make sure that you hold the tails on the same side. So you either pull a thread on this side or you either pull thread on this side. I will pull uh, the thread on the front side. The same I do on the opposite side of the fabric. And once I release the tails, I will pull both of them. So I will hold both tails. I leave the rest hanging and I slowly pull it. It can be also done with one stitch line. You don't have to do two stitch lines always. But in skirt, it gives more security. It's uh, stronger if you will make two stitch lines and do gathering on both of them. 
it will like the gathering will stay much longer and if one thread breaks then you will always have a second thread and while you gather it you have to hold another another side of the thread so basically this is how it's done and uh, while you're pulling the thread you have to make sure that the gathering is equal For this exercise, I will need two pattern pieces. One is skirt. You can see it's a pretty big uh, pattern piece. And second one is the yoke. And uh, if you pay attention, you can see that the length of the skirt is much bigger than the yoke. And uh, we will use the method gathering. So we would gather here in order to attach it to here and uh, uh, the very important thing here you can see the notch here right in the middle and here right in the middle thanks to this notch we will be able to understand where exactly it's supposed to be attached so as you can see this notch goes here and this goes here and then we have to gather it in order to match this length. The same thing happens on this part as well. So we will cut two pieces of this pattern, front and back, and two pieces of this pattern, also front and back. I have two patterns for the yoke, and uh, I have three notches. This notch shows the seam allowance, which will be at the side. It's half inch. This notch shows the seam allowance as well, which is half inch. And this notch shows the center. Then I have other two pattern pieces. Again, I have notch here showing the side seam. Then I have notch in the center. I have notch here showing the side seam as well. And I have notch here, which shows the where zipper stops. So this area here is for the zipper. First step is to create gathering. On each pattern piece separately, we will make two base stitches. First ba base stitch will be uh, 1 8 inch away from the edge. I will make a pencil line because uh, it might be easier, especially for you, to have some navigation. This will be the first line. Try to do it along the uh, the whole edge, and the next line will be quarter inch away from it. So basically, first line will be stitching one eight away from the edge, and second one quarter inch away from the first basting stitch line. Once we have gathering here on both patterns, we need to pull the thread and make sure that this length matches the yoke, yoke length. And uh, to avoid confusion, I want to write front and back. So these two will be front. I'm writing on the wrong side. And this two will be back. Yeah. 
Now my task is to pull the thread to match the yoke. Uh, important note that when we were making a stitch line, we did not do back tack because uh, back tech will not let us to do gathering. Basically pull the thread slowly and create a nice gathering. After attaching a yoke to the skirt, we need to serge this edge. Surging the edge, we need to top stitch the yoke. When we top stitch the yoke, it has to be quarter inch above from the seam, from the stitch line. So basically, the stitch is done on the yoke side and it has to be quarter inch above than the stitch line. So basically, it has to go all the way here. Don't forget to do back tack on the both sides. And the important thing, when you stitch it, make sure that the seam allowance faces yoke as well. Because when you will be stitching, you need to stitch through all layers and also seam allowance as well. Now we need to serge the side seams of the skirt. Now 
now we need to pin uh, front to the back of the skirt and when you pin it don't forget that you have a zipper and we left notch in order to leave the space open for the zipper here is the notch this one is the notch and uh, once I find the opposite notch here I will leave this space open from here to here because ideally this four inches gap is for the zipper. The rest you can pin and while you pin it, make sure that everything is matching. And when you will attach the side seams, uh, use the half inch seam allowance. join the side, uh, side of the front and back skirt, you need to press the seam allowance open. Uh, we need to press it because now uh, we will sew hem, we will do a double turn hem finish and uh, keeping seam allowance opened will help us to do the hem. step for this skirt is to do hem. Double hem is uh, one of the most complicated hems but for this kind of skirt uh, usually if you pay attention double hem is done because you can see there is gathering and usually on the skirts or dresses where you have gathering and where you have a lot of fabric at the bottom you need to do double turn because it will look more uh, it will look nicer, it will create less bulk, and it will not be that obvious. That's why double, turn, uh, double turned hem is the cleanest way of finishing the hem for a, flared, uh, for a flared or for a gathered skirt. Just to remind, uh, when we do double turn, what we do first? First, we turn quarter inch so once you turn quarter inch all around the hemline, then you stitch 1 16 from the fold line. Basically, you fold it and here is the fold line and you stitch 1 16. If I draw a line, it's right here. After you stitch 116, you take your scissors and you trim the like the extra fabric. Basically, you will trim along the stitch line, but be careful, not don't cut the thread. After you trimmed it, you fold it again, but this time you fold 1/8. This is approximately 1/8. And once you fold it 1 8, you do another stitch line, but from this edge. So basically, you stitch 1 16 from here. 
if before we had to stitch from this fold line now we have to stitch from this fold line so basically the stitch line will go here 116 away from here and once you complete this last step the hem is done so let's get started <laughs> I finished stitching 116 away from the fold line and now I will trim the extra uh, the extra fabric I have here I try to cut close to the stitch line but at the same time, make sure that I don't cut the thread itself. Okay, I think it will be easier to do from this side. Once you finish trimming it, the next step is to turn it one eight inch and then uh, you need to stitch it one sixteen away from from this fold line pin it one uh, fold it and then pin it along the whole hemline and uh, then it will be easier for you to stitch on the machine. our final result from the back this is one side seam another one we have a zipper here that's why I opened and the hem this is how double turn hem should look like Thank you for joining today's class and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would have any questions uh, when you will be sewing and practicing at home, you can always ask me on Facebook, uh, on the Scouting Court uh, Facebook page where every Wednesday at 1 p.m. I organize a live video where on in the comments you can ask the question and I will reply them. And um, yeah, that's it for today. And uh, I will see you in a week. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.